In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this large but very elegant bag right from scratch. There's no pattern needed with this one. I'll give you all of the measurements and it's really simple to make. Um, I think the beauty of this one is the fabric that I've actually used. So I've got a trick for you as to how you can use fabric that you wouldn't normally think of when making something structural like a bag. So let me tell you all about it. These are my two pieces of outer fabric and they measure 16 inches across by 14 inches deep. What I really wanted to show you with this fabric is how I'm making it work to make a bag. So the fabric is actually viscose, which is beautiful. That would make a really lovely dress. My daughter's actually made a, a, a long summer dress out of it. And it looks beautiful. Um, a halter neck top, a blouse, a floaty skirt. It's fine, it's fluid, and it's cool, and it's the most amazing fabric to work with for dressmaking and attire. But you wouldn't pick this up in a fabric store and think, oh, I can make a bag out of that, because it's just so fine and so flimsy. But I wanted to show you that, yes, you can. And it's all to do with your stabilizer. Um, so this is your fabric beforehand. It's like sewing with liquid. It's so fluid. And this is the fabric that I'm going to make the bag out of, which is quite stiff. And the reason being, I've put Deck of the Light on the back of it. Now, I could have used a fusible fleece, like an H640. I could have used a heavier weight of Decaville, but I've chosen the Decaville Light, so it's got firmness. It's not going to twist. It's not fluid. It's not going to spill across the table like this viscose would do. Um, this makes it a lot firmer, a lot more structured. And you could do the same with any fabric. So maybe there's a jersey, a stretch fabric that you really like the prints and you'd really like to make a bag maybe to match an outfit that you make. Oh, that would be nice. And my daughter's long floaty summer dress um, to have the bag to match then you can do if you stabilize the fabric and stop it from being fluid and stop it from twisting and stop it from stretching simply by using a stabilizer on the wrong side of it. So I cut two pieces um, to this size and then I'm using the Hearts Cotton Poplin as a lining fabric. So I've cut two pieces to the same size of that. And then I have two pieces for the flap fabric. I'll list all of these underneath so you know how much to cut. And then a couple of tabs to support the D-rings, which are these. I'm using one inch D-rings. And then in turn, I have a strap which has um, swivel snaps. So I can attach the strap to the D-rings after the bag's completed. So let's start with the shape of the bag. So although I've got the rectangles at the moment, this is how I, I kind of work it out. I want the, one strap to go on here. I could do two, but I want one with D-rings on each side. And I'd like the bag to be shaped so I'm going to trim a little bit off the edge here and then make it round here and even put a couple of darts in so the bag's got a, a, a bit of a belly. So it'll hold, it's a big bag, it'll hold quite a lot of things. So I'm going to take my rotary cutter and ruler and I'm going to cut one and a half inches from the top corner here all the way down to the bottom corner. And then do the same on this side, so one and a half inches across here, down to the bottom corner. Whoops, that slipped. Then I'll need to do the same with the lining pieces. So I can actually use this as a template now. What I'm going to do just before I cut that is to iron my lining pieces. I don't like to work with creased fabric because it's not accurate. So you imagine if you're cutting fabric and there's got a little crease in it, and if it's only a crease of an eighth of an inch or a couple of millimetres folded in half, you've got a quarter of an inch out in your fabric. So always start with a crease-free fabric. Okay, so two lining pieces, let's put those together.
then I can use, as I said, one of my outer pieces as a template to cut these to exactly the same size. put a pattern weight on there okay what I also would like to do is to round off these corners I could use um, a plate or a saucer I happen to have a, a rather large ribbon reel here um, this measures six inches across so something around five six seven inches circular would be absolutely fine so I'm just going to place this over one corner and draw a line around here so I've got a nice shape there and the same on this side and remember I've got all three uh, sorry four layers of fabric I'm cutting through here but if you wanted to do that one at a time to make it a bit easier then that's absolutely fine so let's cut through here can see as well with this uh, deck of a light although it's quite a solid interfacing it's really easy to cut through it's really easy to sew through and I'm not going to trim back the seam allowances either now saying about giving the bag a little bit of a belly a little bit more shape I want to put some dots into the side here so I'm going to start that with the lining actually and let's fold the side to the base and I'm just going to crease here I'm doing it on the lining because it's a lot, a lot easier than on the Decaville side now because that's not going to crease as easy um, so let me draw that so that you can see it clearly so that's the liner I have so this is going to go from this oops get the top off from the center of the curve and then I'm going to draw a line with my ruler again from the one and a half inch mark. Where are we? There we go. Now let's do two inches from the edge and half an inch this way up to the top like so. So again, half an inch away from the bottom of the dart to the point at the top. Then I'm going to fold this in half. and cut away that shape and then I can use this piece as a template for all of the other pieces to cut the same dart shape pieces and two outer pieces all exactly the same shape with the darts then we need to sew the darts together so fold the edges of the dart together and we're going to sew across there always from the outside of the fabric along to the point when you get to the edge of the dart here gently curve it and then back stitch a couple of stitches and we do this with every single dart on each piece so just a little bit of a curve and then back so I'm actually stitching if I show you close up here 
along the side of the dart and then back stitch just a couple of stitches along the fold of the fabric here so your stitch goes in the shape of a tick go down and then go back up again by a couple of stitches and again do this on all pieces so fold that so that the edges of the dart meet always from the edge of the fabric towards the fold of fabric curve very slightly back stitch straight and the curve very slightly is so that you avoid a really sharp point at the edge of the dart when you turn this the right side out so those are now my four bag pieces so you can see the size of the bag and the way that it's starting to take shape Now if you wanted to put pockets on the inside of the bag, now's the time to do it. I'm not going to with this one, um, but you could put a patch pocket on the inside. You could put a letterbox zip pocket on the inside if you have a look at some more of my tutorials. Um, you can put like, smaller pockets with dividers so you've got somewhere to keep um, your mobile phone or your cell phone and car keys and things like that. This one I'm just going to leave plain because it's more about you making a bag from flimsy fabrics that you didn't think you could do and uh, and creating your own designer bag as well because of course you can adapt these once you learn the technique you can adapt these to any size of bag that you like so let's make up the flap next up so my flap here i've got two pieces of fabric and i'm using the lining fabric as a contrast and these measure 11 inches across by 7 inches down and again on one side I've put the deck of a light the other side I haven't and just like previously I'm going to round the corners of this off so I'm going to use the same template as I did before which is my huge ribbon reel that could be a plate or a saucer it doesn't really matter and just draw a curve in each bottom corner and then make sure you've got two pieces cut to just the same size Now I'm going to use a magnetic snap as a closure. So I'll have a magnet part, which is quite fat, and a backing. And then the opposite side is quite thin, and a backing for that one as well. And it's the thinner part that goes onto the lining of the flap. So let's fold this in half so I can find the center point. open up come on and I'm going to place the back of the snap about an inch two and a half centimeters from the bottom and draw a line through each one of those gaps each side of the back and to take a scrap piece of fabric and you're not going to see this so it doesn't matter what it is and oh, I shan't use that one I'll use my glue pen and I'm just going to put this behind the holes that I'm going to put to put the magnetic clasp in just to cut down on the strain that it's going to take as I open and close the clasp. So a little bit of glue on there. And that goes just behind where those marks are here. Then I can either take a sharp pair of scissors or my quick and pick and just cut two little snips over those marks don't cut them too big better to be smaller than bigger then put the prongs of the snap through the holes the back of the snap goes on here and you'll probably find it easier to squish the legs of the snap open and then the two lining pieces sorry the lining piece and the outer piece of the decaville are going to be sewn right sides together like so so i'll have a few pins in there it's quite easy to pin through this and then i'm going to sew all the way around the edge
So out come the pins. And around the curve of the seams, I'm just going to trim the fabric back quite close to the seam, like so. You could put little V-shaped cuts in there or cut with pinking shears, but I find that quite sufficient. And then we'll turn this the right side out. And press. So I'm pressing with the seam right on the edge. So let me just push that out so I've got a nice curvy shape. Again, with this deck of a light, it's, it's quite easy to fold and crease. It's not fighting back. It's behaving incredibly well. And we'll press around the seam. And again, this is quite a lightweight fabric I'm using. It's a cotton poplin. But with that um, firmer interfacing, it means that I can make something a little bit more structured that I wouldn't normally think of with lighter weight fabrics. Now I'm going to top stitch around the edge so I can lengthen my stitch. I'm going to go up to a 2.8 on my machine and stitch about a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around. So nice and slow around the corners so I've got a nice straight line of stitching. If you're a confident sewer, you can, of course, use a contrast colour thread, which would look nice around here. So that's the flap finished. So let's sew this onto the back of the bag. So with the snap facing upwards, this is going to sit centrally across the bag here. So you can measure and make sure that these, the distance between the edge of the flap and the edge of the fabric is in exactly the right place. I can gauge that by eye. And I'm just going to put a couple of clips in there to hold it in place. And then sew close to the edge along the top, just within the seam allowance, to hold that in place while we construct the rest of the bag. So that's the flap in place. So let's sew the front and the back of the bag pieces together. So I've sewn these right sides together all the way around, matching up the darts from one side to another. And all I do with the darts is to push them in opposite directions. I'm not worried about pressing seams open or things like that. So let's turn this the right side out. It may be a little bit crumply when you turn it through because uh, it's going to be very creased, but even more so when we put the rest of the bag together. And let's push out those curves at the bottom and then we'll put the second half of the magnetic snap on and I do that at this stage because then I can I know that I've positioned this in exactly the right place there we go so let's fold the flap over and I want this to position centrally not too tight quite snug but not too tight across the top I'm just going to draw a mark here and then I'm going to belt and braces by measuring to make sure that's exactly in the centre, which it isn't quite. So I'm going to move it to that point. I'm just using heat erasable pen. It works fine uh, with a project like this. So let's take away the mark that I don't need. Pop the backing over that centre point and draw two little lines either side. And then I'm just going to snip into those lines like so and then the back of my snap will go in place here i'm not going to put any backing on this one because it's already got the decaville interfacing on the back so it doesn't need it slip the backing of the top and squish the sides open and then i'll just make sure that that's in the correct position and that's how my flap's going to look so the next thing i want to do is to put the d-rings onto each side 
So I've cut my two pieces of fabric measuring four inches square and I'm going to press those again. I'm going to give these a little bit of a spray. Got a spray starch or best press can really help to keep um, fine fabrics quite firm as you're working with them. So just allow that to dry a second. So two long sides folded in half then to the center. See how crisp that best press makes it. To the center again and then in half. So because these are four inch wide strips by the time I've folded them I will end up with one inch wide strips which is the size of my D-rings so the hardware is going to fit perfectly inside. And in half again. So two little tabs for my D-ring. I might cut them down a little bit actually. I think they may be too long, but like with previous, I like to work with, with two longs and two short. And I'm just going to sew along each side to make those neat. So although you don't need to sew along both sides, I like to do that because it just looks neater. take my D-rings and again these are one inch or two and a half centimeter wide D-rings, thread my tab through. I think I'll trim about half an inch off the end of that. And the same with the second one. I find it uh, quite often easier um, to work with pieces like this that are a bit too long rather than tiny pieces that are exactly the right size that you need which can be a little bit fiddly so I'd rather have them a bit too long and chop them down than, um, than try and be really accurate with smaller pieces of fabric. Now these are going to go to each side of the bag right over the seam at the side that one's come undone slightly look so let's go over it again. Literally, just the top of that seam has come undone. That's, that's not so good, but it's not a problem when I can just do this. The fabric feels really smooth, actually. You know what it's like when you're working with viscose for dressmaking and you've got a beautiful fabric with a lovely hand, but it's just so soft and tactile. Um, so this is going to go over the side of here. Again, I'm not worried about which way the seams are going to go. If you want to squish those open, then that's fine. I don't tend to bother. And this goes over the side of here. And I'm just going to sew across the top of there just to hold that in place. It's easier to do it from the inside on my machine because I don't have a free arm. But if you do on your machine, that would be a good time to use it. So in the same on this side and I'm just sewing close to the edge within the seam allowance purely just holding that tab in place before I construct the rest of the bag. But you can see how the bag's going to look now as well which is which is quite nice and as you can see it's quite a big bag. Let's move on to the two lining pieces. So just like with the outer I'm going to sew these right sides together but this time leave a gap of about six inches, 10 centimeters in the bottom so that I can turn it the right side out. So I'm not going to pin or clip this one. I'm quite confident it's going to come together well with my darts matching. Um, it's not imperative in the lining. I don't think anybody's going to look inside your lining to make sure that you seem to meet it. But I think it's just nice to know in your own mind that your seams are perfectly matched on the inside as they are on the outside. Makes good sewing practice as they say. So come right to the bottom, there's my gap. Nine times out of ten you probably forget to leave it, but 
we all do. And then back down the second side. And then this time, we'll leave the lining inside out. Because we're now going to take the outside of the bag, flip this over so that the flap is out of the way and drop the whole thing inside the lining. So the right sides are together. So the lining's inside out and the bag is the right side out. Make sure that flap is tucked inside like so. Make sure these little tabs of the D-rings are tucked inside. I'm just going to place a clip over that side seam because I want to make sure they match. Not the end of the world if they don't, no one's going to see it, but it's quite nice to know, as I said before, that your seams are matching. And then I'm going to sew them all together, all the way around the top, so all the way around here. And again, because I don't have a free arm on my sewing machine, I'll be sewing from the inside because I find that easier to do. Then we'll turn the whole thing through, that hole that I hope is large enough to pull it all through in the lining. And we're almost finished. I think bag making for a beginner sewer is, um, is a good starting point as well because yes, there's darts in there, sewn very much in the way as darts are in a blouse or a dress, um, but there isn't a zip, there's nothing to fit. It doesn't matter if the size doesn't end up exactly the right size, no one's going to know. And you're making something that's quite quick, but useful for you as well. With the turning up in the bottom, if you just pull the two edges of the gap away from each other, um, the edge of the fabric tends to roll in. So I'll just pin that and then sew straight across the opening. Then we're going to push the lining inside the bag. And I'm going to fold the top of the lining or the top of this seam. So the seam is sitting exactly on the edge. Then I'm going to top stitch all the way around. And, and again, using the, um, the deck of the light, it's a little bit, it's a bit papery. So it creases really well. So although I'm actually folding the interfacing over, it does crease, it will hold its place. It's not fighting back. With something like a, um, a foam, like, like a Bosal foam stabilizer, um, it can be a little bit bouncy when you're trying to do this, which is fine, you know, it, it works. But this is really simple because it does crease really, really well. So again, I find it's easier to sew from the inside. I like to start and stop in an inconspicuous area, so I'm going to start right on the edge of the flap here. And I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch from the seam. Here I'm just pulling the lining away from the flap, so I'm keeping that nice and flat. So I don't want any puckers in the lining or any creases in the fabric on the outside and sew all the way around. Always stop and start with your needle down. So even if you don't have an automatic um, up down like I have here, turn the hand wheel towards you when you stop so that the needle's always in the down position. And then when you do stop, you know that you're going to start again from exactly the same stitch line. That's really important. Taking these clips as to go. This is a little bit bulky here, but don't worry about that. This is what we're concentrating on. Take it slowly over the bulkier bits. 
Some machines may need a little help over those areas. And then back to the beginning. So let's give my bag one final press. Just to take away those creases from where I turned it the right side out. If you have a tailor's ham, that's quite useful for three-dimensional shapes like this. I can just see a little thread that I don't want to see here, so I'm going to snip that away. Just again push out that base. Close over the flap, and the final thing to do is to attach my handle. Which could be a fabric handle, but um, put the ends of it onto some clips like this if it's going to go onto D-rings. Just push that out a little bit more, fold that over, here you go. And that's my finished bag. So as you can see, it's a nice size. It'll easily go over a shoulder. Um, I think it's elegant enough for an evening bag, but large enough that you can fit your diary and your makeup and your hanky and your sweets and your dog lead or whatever it is you're taking out with you. Um, it's a really useful size of bag. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. And even more, I hope you enjoy making yours. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.